Hi, I'm David Jackson, President and CEO of the Center for Working Families Incorporated. The Center for Working Families is a nonprofit that works in the neighborhoods around Turner Field, Peoplestown, Summerhill, Adair Park, Mechanicsville, and Pittsburgh to help people move to work, get jobs that will allow them to support their family, move to wealth, become banked so that they're saving their money and not spending it at places like check cashing places and payday lenders, and move to entrepreneurship, start small businesses that will help bring an economy back to this community and help families close the gap between what they earn and what they need to survive. What I've learned from being here at the Center for Working Families is that everyone has something to offer. A lot of times we don't know we have something to offer. When you come in here, there are so many things that you can do, so many ways you can express yourself, that you find so much out about yourself and other people that it's just a, it's a wonderful journey. When I came to the Center for Working Families in 2005, I came here because the, I was um, just released from prison and I was trying to get a new life. I didn't want to be looked at as a convicted felon. I didn't want to be looked at as, okay, you've been watch her, she'll steal something. I'm a convicted felon from a charge I, I called in 2006. It was a drug charge. I moved to Atlanta to start my business. I wanted to be a part of a conscious community. I wanted to have my business off the ground, and I wanted to be successful around good people. I have a background. I, I don't, I don't, I'm tired of hiding it. I want to put it out because I want to do something for people just like me. I'm going to keep this background. I'm going to keep going to prison if I don't get some help. And other people are going to do the same thing. This set of communities, also known as NPUV, is really, um, performing poorly in terms of all of the quality of life things that makes a community work well. Children, specifically in this community, are disproportionately living in poverty and not having the outcomes that children in other parts of the city are. So we focus in this community to help turn that around, help families have the opportunity for success, help children have the opportunity for success, and help ensure that there are opportunities for families here to succeed. My role in the neighborhood is, um, as the parents would say, I'm a trusted messenger, but by profession, I'm a family support coordinator uh, for the Sheltering Arms Early Learning and Literacy Resource Center. We have about 190 children with um, double that families that come through that door. My caseload is 85 children, and I'm responsible for all 85 and their families. So again, I have to, you know, deal with all of that, and on top of that, my families and maintaining my job, my house, my, you know, just, it's like a whirlwind, but in the goodness of it is that I was able to continue doing what I love doing, and that's working with families. Parents and children don't know about the great resources that are available, like the Center for Working Families. Families can learn about gardening and learn about planting their own garden at home and come over here and get resources. And so uh, one of the big barriers that I've found is that communication is really a problem. A lot of times families don't know what's going on in the neighborhood. I've never decided to leave the community. I know this is a community that I want to be in. I want to stay in. I want to help. I want to fight. I was just determined that I was not going to leave. I wasn't going to let anyone push me out of my community, even though I went through foreclosure. And, and a lot of families didn't understand that. That's when they were uh, evicted from their homes or pushed from their homes, that they just left. And they didn't have anybody to advocate for them and stand up and fight. And, uh, and they didn't realize that they had resources at their fingertips, but they just didn't know how to utilize it. I think that the organization is the voice of the community. Um, it's our goal and our job, and it's been our task to kind of advocate for the needs of the community. It makes it very difficult to create a um, community when 50% um, of its housing stock is vacant. Um, and some of it is vacant due to foreclosure, some of it was vacant due to not having the resources to be able to make the necessary repairs and revitalization. Um, so what we've been able to do is to kind of think of, um, well, create new vision, foster new, new, um, new thought patterns around what is it going to take for us to really kind of keep the fabric of a neighborhood together. And so we're in partnership with the Center for Working Families um, around 
how do we then ensure that residents are prepared to take advantage of the opportunities through housing counseling, through financial literacy, through making sure that they have um, livable wages, um, and then, if, and then um, ensuring that they're moving on a pathway to success. In other cities and in other communities, you often see that when government spends money in a community, they demand and ensure that people from the community are involved in the jobs and the work that's created by it. Many communities have things, for example, called community benefits agreements. When new construction of a school happens, people from community get jobs working and building those schools. Those policies aren't as robust here in this community as they could be. And with policy initiatives that focus on that, we can help more people find jobs. All of us have struggles at one time or another in our lives, and it's, it's normal. Some people, unfortunately, have it uh, much harder than others. The Center for Working Families has been here to try to help people overcome those hurdles. Since I've been here, I've, I've joined, I've been what, about a month, and since I've been here, it's, it's been awesome. It's been phenomenal. I have, haven't been depressed, because I was very depressed, and uh, I haven't been depressed. It's, it's been very uplifting. You know, empowering, and I, I love it. <laughs> I really do. Sorry, I, I do. I, I love it. Well, what I like most about the Center for Working Families are the people. The people are wonderful. They come from different backgrounds, very diverse, uh, very intelligent, very resourceful, and they have genuine hearts. They have light hearts, and they they are dedicated to community service. The neighborhood is growing. It's rapidly growing. You see a lot of houses out here that need people to move in. They have programs here that they're working on to get people back into this neighborhood, to bring it back to life where it needs to be. And that's one of the things that this center does. It gives life where there was no life. Some of the programs and, and activities I like about the Center for Working Families consists of the 21st Century Program, the Fatherhood Program, which is an excellent program that has a niche because the niche is dealing with the fathers within the household. And if it's about helping the family, you may want to get the father involved before you try to uh, uh, do too much building without the father. The Sisterhood Program that I participated in has been good. But now my big challenge is going to the Women's Economic Self-Sufficiency Program where I graduated for my business and came up with a business plan. But that was a year ago. So now I'm in boot camp so that I can make something happen. That means if I had all these great ideas and I really want to do business and want to have my own business, what am I doing with it? I have a business plan that me and my wife has been working on. She does uh, everything wonderful. It's a, a basket, a pillow basket. She does it by hand. Uh, and we work together on that project and we're trying to expand. My business is uh, it's Angel to the Rescue, which is a licensed mobile massage therapy business. And I uh, specialize in senior citizens. No one takes care of the old people. But behind the traumatic uh, challenges I had in my life, I finally felt proud of myself because I finally finished something. I was looking for a place that I could come and just talk and nobody would judge me on you know, what I had to say. They listened and uh, the Dunbar Center was that place. I came to the first orient I came to the orientation to find out what it was all about. Um, and it looked like something that I needed at the time. But when I got here and got into this program, especially the 21st century program, I found out it was much more. I found out it was what I needed and much, much more. I had spiritual guidance, technical guidance, you know, and just a good sense of who I am again. You all give as much to me as I give to you, really. Because I, I, when I say that you are men and women of greatness, I mean that. I mean that. And I look forward to down the road, our paths crossing again. And that greatness that is within you, 
being demonstrated and you fulfilling your purpose. Not just to get paid, but to fulfill your purpose and your destiny. Because I, throughout the class, it, it was obvious that each of you have a skill that you all need to, to put out there and the world needs to take advantage of them. The Center for Work and Families, while providing services in this community, really needs investors, funders, and volunteers to come in and work with us to, to make this happen. It's a very expensive proposition to work in a community that has such deep need. But we want to see our concepts realized and implemented, executed. We want to see these plans for, popular, for public policy actually taking place in our community whereby our people have viable resources for employment and be retooled. We are the inventors of society. We are the social innovators and we have those types of talents, skills and abilities in these neighborhoods.